In this video, we're going to focus on uh, the Gilman reagent, also known as an organocuprate. So let's begin by talking about how it's made. So first, we need the organolithium compound, and we're going to react it with copper iodide in THF. This is going to produce the Gilman reagent. And then lithium iodide will be a side product. So the typical formula of the Gilman reagent is that it has two R groups, a copper and a lithium atom attached to it. So this is it. But it's made from an organolithium reagent. Now, the Gilman reagent is very useful for converting alkyl halides into alkanes. So if we were to mix 1-bromobutane with this particular organocuprate, what's going to happen is we're going to replace the bromine group with a CH3 group or an R group. And so this reagent is very useful for making carbon-carbon bonds. Now, not only can we convert an alkyl halide into an alkane, but we can also replace the halogen in a vanilla halide. So consider this example. If we were to use CH3 times 2 CuLi, what's going to happen is we're going to replace the bromine atom with the R group that we see here. And the cool thing about this reaction is it's stereospecific. The configuration at the double bond is retained. It doesn't change. But all we need to do to get the product is simply replace the bromine group with an ethyl group. And so it works with vanillic halides. Now let's look at another example. So in this example, we have an arrow halide. And the Gilman reagent is also very useful in this case. Keep in mind, S and two reactions don't work with vinyl or aryl halides. You can't replace the leaving group with a nucleophile in those reactions. So that's one of the usefulness of the Gummy reagent when dealing with these types of uh, substrates. So we can replace this leaving group, which is a poor leaving group in, uh, well, it's actually a good leaving group for S and two reactions, but when dealing with vinyl or aryl halides, it just doesn't work for those types of reactions. But using the Gilman reagent, we can replace the bromine with an R group. So this is going to give us toluene. So here's another example of this reaction. The Gilman reagent doesn't react with aldehydes or ketones, as this example will demonstrate. It will displace the bromine leaving group, but the ketone group will be unaffected. So the end result is that you just need to replace the halogen with the R group. So it's very easy to determine what the product will be. But now sometimes you may not have a halogen to displace. In this example, we're going to have an alpha beta unsaturated ketone. This is the alpha carbon, this is the beta carbon. Now, if you were to mix this particular ketone with an organocuprate, 
what's going to happen is you're going to get the 1 4 addition product. That is, you're going to get the conjugate product. The copper, I mean the, the gamma reagent, is going to add the R group to the beta carbon. The ketone will be unaffected. So the end result of this reaction is that the double bond that is conjugated to the ketone, uh, that is going to disappear after this addition reaction. Now, if we were to use a Grinner reagent, the situation will be different. With the use of a Grinner reagent, the ketone will be reduced into an alcohol. And we're going to add the R group at the tertiary carbon. The double bond will be unaffected. So just keep that in mind.